Now we're excited to move into the lightning talks from the tech teams who focused on these challenges. First, we'll hear from OpenAQ, American University, and Rutgers University IDEA program on their work on the challenge of measuring the impact of transportation emissions on air quality, our challenge in collaboration with EPA. And then we'll hear from Georgetown University, Rutgers Computer Science Program, Esri, and IBM about their work on reducing ocean plastic pollution, our challenge in collaboration with the Wilson Center and the US State Department. First, we'll hear from teams that worked on the air quality challenge, and I'll hand it over to Shruti from OpenAQ to kick us off. Shruti, over to you. Hi, everybody. My name is Shruti Modakurthy, and I'm the platform lead at OpenAQ, and I'll be talking to you about the snapshot tool that we developed as part of the Opportunity Project. Air pollution causes one out of every eight deaths on the planet. It is one of the biggest public health and human rights issues of our time. As part of the Opportunity Project, we spoke to a number of different community advocates, including Clean Air Carolina, the Asthma and Allergy Foundation, SLC Air Protectors, and the CEE GH Lab from UMD to understand how communities are tackling the challenge of air pollution. And throughout the conversations, we discovered that um, often data exists, uh, air quality data exists in uh, different formats or in data silos. Um, or, uh, you know, air quality data doesn't exist at all. Um, and there is nothing to back up the lived experience that communities are facing uh, with air pollution. And so the challenge that we tried to tackle was that community groups don't have access to data to back up the lived experience of poor air quality. Um, and second part of the challenge is that uh, existing tools that examine air quality data are too complicated for everyone to make use of and to understand. And we found that communities absolutely need basic access to data to actually uh, fight for change and influence policy. And that's where OpenAQ comes in. So we're a nonprofit um, that is dedicated to fighting air pollution with open data and community. Uh, we're globally based and uh, we have an open source platform that aggregates and harmonizes air quality data from over 95 countries and we pull in uh, EPA uh, air now data uh, for US air quality measurements. Um, and this is an open source platform that's on GitHub and all of this data is available easily through an API. And so as part of this project, we've developed uh, an additional API endpoint uh, that averages a lot of the data um, and makes it easier to um, understand uh, the uh, real time data that is coming into the platform. And then on top of the averaging tool, we built the snapshot tool. Um, and let's say I'm a community activist and um, I'm in Los Angeles and I want to understand what the uh, air quality has been like for the past year. So I select averaging time interval day and the dates. Um, and then here it brings up a snapshot of the um, air quality for the past year. You can see some statistics, um, the number of stations that exist in the area and the map. Um, and you can see that uh, according to the World Health Organization guidelines, we had some days probably due to the fires this year where air quality is unhealthy. You can also download the data that shows up in this snapshot tool and save it as a CSV file and uh, share this snapshot easily through social media like Twitter. In addition uh, to getting this snapshot, you can also learn a little bit more about what's happening in your area um, and learn more about what is air inequality, how does it affect me, what is PM 2.5. Um, and uh, this is uh, what we just, uh, this is what OpenEQ worked on uh, for the Opportunity Project. We would love to hear from you. Uh, we'd love to get feedback um, and we hope you can join us at the um, exposition uh, to learn more about the tool. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Ruthie. It's really exciting to see how you've incorporated federal open data into a global platform like this and look forward to seeing where it goes from here. Now we'll hear from Chase from American University about their product focused on transportation emissions and air quality in DC. Over to you, Chase. Hi everyone, my name is Chase and I'm a master's in data science student at American University and was one of the contributors on the AirMotion DC tech product. For a moment, I want you to think about three separate scenarios. First, a government agency, student, or researcher is interested in analyzing the real-time relationship between air pollution and transportation. 
Second, maybe an activist is interested in showing how this relationship differs by location and may be harming one community more than another. Three, maybe a DC resident is interested in seeing current weather, air pollution, or traffic in their location in order to decide their morning commute. What's stopping them currently? We identify three major problems currently preventing these three groups. First is a lack of real-time data. Most data is reported with a significant lag, and 2018 or 2019 data surely won't help our DC resident know about their morning commute. Second is a lack of granular data. Where the data does exist, it's mostly reported at the citywide level, preventing our activists from understanding which communities are most at risk. Third is a lack of data cohesion. Most of the data that's real time is separated between platforms with air quality data in one location, traffic data in another, and weather in yet a third. This would complicate the process for our government agencies and student researchers. Well, how can open data help? Like we mentioned, the data does exist, which is the good news. Through existing APIs at AirNow, OpenWeather, and TomTom, we were able to create a real-time repository to update with air quality, weather, and traffic data for DC. To select the locations we would pull from, we utilized Open Data DC to create a data set of every road segment in DC and randomly sampled this group to create a location data set to pull the API data from. Since this only included latitude and longitude data, which isn't helpful for most end users who wouldn't know that, we merged this with more helpful location information from the DC GIS master address repository, like quadrants, zip codes, and wards. So our overall solution then is AirMotion DC, a real-time data tool which analyzes traffic patterns, air pollution, and weather in the District of Columbia. This enables the user to explore the real-time relationship between transportation and air quality at both a granular location-specific level and a citywide level. The interface includes several features, four of which are shown in front of you. The first, an overview page to greet the user and explain the tool. Second, a background page to explain where the data is sourced from and include additional resources for the user to engage with. The bottom two are raw data pages for the end user who's interested in more deep dives into the data. Our two main features are a citywide location tab and a location search tab. The citywide tab features location specific, features traffic patterns, air pollution, and weather data for the whole of DC, where users can dive into current data, compare it to data from one week ago, or to the full historic data set. Users are able to select which parameters on traffic, air quality, and weather they'd like to include with metrics such as current travel time, ozone air quality index, and, and temperature to view. A variety of graphics are provided for data exploration, including tables, bar charts, trend lines, and location maps. The location search tab, as you can see on the left, functions similarly to the citywide tab, but allows users to select which specific location they'd like to observe and compare, like the quadrants, wards, and zip codes I previously mentioned. With these features, our government agencies, student researchers, activists, and DC residents alike are all able to achieve their end goal. Our initial tool was developed for the use of the DC Department of Energy and Environment, who are interested in developing a long-term data set of fine scale traffic data to estimate vehicle miles traveled and emissions from. Our biggest next step then is to expand our end user base to more than just the DC Department of Energy. For those interested, the link to our tool is provided here with contact information for our team if you have any questions or comments for us. Thank you, for every Thank you everyone for your time. Thank you, Chase. It's so awesome to see how you've integrated both federal and private sector API data into this tool. And we can't wait to see how the DC Department of Energy and others will use it. Thank you. Next, I will hand it over to Suk Meet from Rutgers University uh, to talk about their product in response to the same challenge. I'll turn it over to you now. Hi, my name is Sikmi Betty, and I'm from the Rutgers IDEA team, and our product is Better Air, Better Schools. So essentially, 26 million kids take the bus to school and back home every single day, and every year, around 14 million students end up having school day absences, absences that are linked to transportation emissions. But at that age, uh, they're not really educated and they're not really taught about what transportation emissions are, what their effects are. 
and what can be done to change that so there are less absences. So our goal with our product, Better Air, Better Schools, is to basically educate and raise awareness within a, a segment of, um, of youth from five to eight. So throughout this entire design sprint, we carry this quote really heavily. We cannot always build the future for our youth, but we can build our youth for the future. And with that, meet NIMBY. So imagine you are a, a student in second grade uh, and you take the bus to school every day. And in class, you come today and you learn about NIMBY. So this is your cloud companion to help you learn about air quality and air pollution. So with our product, we take you to through an interactive set of games that help you learn more about what air pollution is, what causes of air pollution are, and the things that you could do to take action. And as a kid, you're always inspired by making um, others happy. And in this case, we want to make NIMBY turn from a gray cloud to a happy cloud. So these are some of the things that our user segment, which is uh, students, they can do. So one thing is action steps. So we have listed out action steps and we are creating a, uh, a power map so that uh, students can find who their administrators are, who to contact in the Board of Education, as well as who they can contact and their congressional representatives to actually take action to increase funding their school to uh, replace school buses or to retrofit school buses in order to decrease emissions as well as talking to adults in different petitions that they can sign. But it doesn't just end there. Our user group is extremely useful in the fact that they have a tendency to go home and talk to their parents a lot. That brings us to the next point, which is we also have links for parents, different ways that parents can learn about transportation, transportation emissions themselves, as well as different links to how they can take action in their community regards to how they can increase the funding for uh, their school districts, how they can educate themselves and the other parents around them and different resources that they can implement because at the end of the day, these are the people that are going to be making the change. In addition to this, we also have a teacher's tab, which is going to be used for teachers and school administrators. This tab is essentially going to allow teachers and school administrators to look at the resources that they have available to them from the EPA uh, and their uh, local governments and state governments to essentially figure out and build long-term plans of how to decrease emissions within their communities. And this is extremely useful because not only is this giving them an educational plan, which can be implemented within to the curriculum to increase education, it's also giving them concrete details of how to increase funding for their district in order to implement all of the things that would actually benefit them in the long term. And our user journey goes from the teacher discovers a website and they show it to our students who shows it to our, their parents. And as a whole, the entire user group would make changes through the school administration. And we were really helped by all the federal data that has been compiled. Uh, so we use things like the Idle Free uh, Schools Toolkit, the Diesel Emission Reduction Act, as well as some information from the magic school bus gets cleaned up. And essentially we took all of this research, we simplified these concepts into kid-friendly terms and we created an understandable set of learning tools that are helpful for not only students but between five and eight years old, but also teachers, parents, and school administrators. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sukhmeet. It's so great to see what an engaging product you've all created to visualize the effects of transportation emissions and your clear calls to action are such a great way to communicate with students, parents, and schools. Now we'll hear from Elizabeth and Sid from Georgetown University's Beck Center for Social Impact and Innovation to share their approach that addresses plastic pollution on college campuses. Over to you. Thank you so much. My name is Elizabeth Nguyen and Sid and I are seniors at Georgetown University. On behalf of the Georgetown team, we are so excited to introduce you all to the Clean Campus Initiative. For our initiative against ocean plastics, we wanted to focus upstream. From our user research, we found the first step to getting plastic out of the oceans is to properly manage waste in our own communities. We wanted to target a population not typically engaged in the plastics conversation 
and decided the community we could have the most impact on would be our own. Collaborating with the Wilson Center and Earth Challenge 2020, we created the Clean Campus Initiative designed to educate and engage college students on ocean plastics. Looking at our own Georgetown community, we realized there's a lack of baseline recycling education on campus. I come from rural North Carolina where we can't recycle glass in my town and realized there is no education for students coming to DC from all areas of the world on how to recycle. We wanted to expand the conversation from just environmentally focused students to students of every background and hopefully create a community shift in the way we interact with plastics. We created three products to engage the college community on different levels from general education modules, interaction with the Earth Challenge 2020 app through a dashboard and a strategy playbook to spread our initiative to other campuses. Since college students come from diverse backgrounds and experiences, our first product ensures that every student is aware of the role they can play in reducing plastic pollution. This first product is a set of education modules to be facilitated during each college's new student orientation period. Crafted through, through best practice research, as well as guidance from our wonderful user advocates, the content of this curriculum is split into three modules. The first module engages students on how plastic pollution Im impacts the environment, specifically the oceans. The second module discusses the importance of recycling and what types of materials can be recycled. The third module covers campus specific policies and resources, as well as information on how students can get engaged. Each module will include visuals and a short quiz to ensure that the learning is retained. For students that express more interest in these issues, our second product helped engage them even more in reducing plastic in their college communities. Our second product is a university specific dashboard that integrates with the Earth Challenge 2020 app led by the Earth Day Network, the Wilson Center and the State Department on one of the largest citizen science projects to date. Through the Earth Challenge 2020 app, users can track plastic pollution in their communities and mark the location of plastics found. Universities have an organizational code on the app to partition their campus specific data. These data entries will be embedded onto a map on our dashboard to allow us to visualize all plastics tracked in the Georgetown community. Other features on the dashboard include instructions on using the app, the total amount of plastic collected, a student to plastic ratio, and additional resources for students, including links to other, our other products, information on joining environmental clubs and classes. Students then interact, both interact and contribute to open federal data sets. For Georgetown specifically, this dashboard will live on the Office of Sustainability websites and will also include Georgetown specific campus resources. For other universities, this dashboard can be easily customized and embedded onto websites of their choice. Our first two products for the Clean Campus Initiative focus on a specific campus where we use Georgetown University as a pilot. However, our third product, a strategy playbook, is forward looking. This playbook provides an overview of the importance of reducing plastic pollution, as well as the details on every step we took, including user advocate outreach, collegiate stakeholder engagement, and product development. It will live on the Wilson Center website, as well as campus specific websites, and is designed to help any college student or group easily bring the Clean Campus Initiative to their campus as well. As we complete our first round of user testing, our next step is to not only finish implementing this initiative at Georgetown, but to find other college students who are excited to bring this initiative to their campus. After all, only by scaling and spreading this initiative can we truly reduce plastic pollution in our communities and oceans. Thank you. Wow, thank you so much, Georgetown team. It's incredible to see that you've been able to create so many products in such a short period of time and how well you've integrated it within your own campus. We're so excited to see how this will scale to other campuses. Next, I'll hand it over to Naveen from Rutgers University to share how his team handled this challenge. Naveen, over to you. Thank you. Uh, hello everyone, this is Naveen Narayanan and I'm a master student from the Department of Computer Science at Rutgers University. We are working on a project that hopefully will help reduce plastic pollution in the oceans. Uh, we conducted weeks of research to understand the extent of this problem and how to address it. The numbers we found about plastic pollution in the ocean was scary. One million plastic drinking bottles purchased every minute and only 9% of the plastic has been recycled. About 8.3 billion tons of plastic produced since 1950 and the ocean plastics directly impact more than 800 species worldwide. So our goal and motivation were to be part of a community trying to protect marine animals, humans and environmental health 
by encouraging both the volunteers and organizations to participate in more beach cleanup events. We followed an agile methodology to develop our product, started by engaging the user advocates from uh, Ocean, Con Ocean Conservancy, Lonely Whale, and the University of Georgia to understand the problem more and shape our product's objectives. We used the global beach cleanup events, federal data from various mobile and web applications, such as Marine Litter Watch, Marine Debris Monitoring and Assessment Project, and trash information and data for education and solution. After cleaning and preparing this data, we started with the development pro process of our product. The steps of development were iterative. Uh, we developed the product, took feedback from user advocates, and we were back to development again. Ultimately, we came up with a web dashboard that is addressed to both the volunteers and organizers of beach cleanup events. From the volunteer's point of view, we are providing the tools and data visualization that will help them track their work and identify the trends in beach cleanup events through seasons. The dashboard will also suggest beach cleanup events near their location. They can also check the progress of beach cleanup events in other countries. We provide the latest news and guidance from various blogs and social media sites. Finally, they can also check the type of animals entangled and focus more on protecting it. Moving on, we developed a separate web page in our dashboard for the beach cleanup event organizers. The organizers can use our dashboard to check the beach cleanup, uh, to check the beaches that lack beach cleanup events, predict the number of volunteers needed for a beach cleanup event. By incorporating machine learning algorithms, we forecasted the increase in number of beach cleanup events in the future. Finally, we also help them to plan and share their cleanup events. We made our uh, we made our web application user friendly by adding an easy to use tutorial. The users of our dashboard can download images and export reports. Some of the interactive tools that we have used in our web application are zooming, filtering, uh, filtering, screen sharing, screenshots, and coloring. So uh, we also believed that increasing the awareness globally uh, regarding both the problem and the solution is an essential factor uh, in measuring this product success. Hence, we embedded a Twitter list that shows the latest news and work that have been done regarding this topic and added comprehensive videos, blogs, and references. Our dashboard is deployed on Heroku Cloud application and you can access the same using the link given below. Lastly, I would like to thank the top team, agency lead, product advisors, fellow teams, my professors and my teammates Abhinav and Fatima for their opportunity, continuous support, guidance and encouragement. Thank you. Wow, thank you so much to another awesome team. It's so exciting to see how your product really closes the loop between volunteers and beach cleanup organizers. And we're excited to see what kind of collaboration that leads to in the future. Now I'll turn it over to Keith from Esri to talk about how they use story maps to address this challenge. Keith, please take it away. Thanks, Drew. Hello, I'm Keith Van Grafland, a product engineer at Esri. Today, I'm excited to share an overview of the solution we collaborated collaborated on uh, towards the ocean plastic problem. Uh, <clears throat> a major part of the ocean's plastic problem is not having a good handle on the severity. That's why the underlying theme for our ocean's plastic story map is you can't manage what you can't measure. Thanks to the integration of GIS with the sciences of remote sensing and its in situ observation and measurement, we have a stronger understanding of ocean plastic pollution, its major sources, movement, impacts, and ultimate destinations. Recently, environmental emergency response experts from the US EPA, Oceans P3 Systems, and ESRI collaborated in the development of a story map to better inform individuals and communities about the global ocean plastics problem and, and to provide options for taking action. The story map is an interactive experience, as you can see, accessible through a web browser that gives readers the ability to explore the ocean plastic problem with rich maps, graphics, and other related resources, including links and citations for relevant publications and openly accessible online resources. Throughout this project, what was most apparent is the role of it, that individuals play in taking action against the problem. As individuals, we should be more conscious about sustainability when making purchases 
as well as ensuring that goods, including plastics, are utilized to their full potential. The Lazy Person's Guide to Saving the World, provided by the United Nations, lists many options where individuals can get involved at different levels, whether it's at home or at the workplace or in their community. Some of the examples of this are buying minimally packaged goods or bringing your own coffee mug or uh, to a coffee shop or reusing uh, refillable water bottles. Understanding the role of the individual in solving the problem is key to helping curb that problem. Really, it all starts by understanding where ocean plastic or plastics come from and the likelihood of plastic being recycled. It's all critical to addressing our plastic pollution crisis. Currently, virgin plastic production is more cost effective than recycling. Here, we visualize the process of virgin plastic creation beginning in oil and gas fields through production to ultimate creation of plastic pellets that are used by factories for manufacturing of plastic goods. Understanding how recycling works and the likelihood of, of plastic being recycled is also very important. We need to value plast recycled plastics appropriately and incentivize recycling programs to be more efficient and more effective. Too much opportunity for plastic to escape in the environment exists and not to be recycled. Even if the consumer places a plastic in a streamlined recycling bin for collection, the chances of that being recycled are minimal. These changes are required to slow and stop plastic leakage into our environment. Once plastic enters the environment and is transported by waterways and stormwater systems to our oceans, where the problem exponentially worsens. These impacts are not only a menace to aquatic wildlife, plastics continue to degrade into smaller microplastics, producing a direct threat on food security. My microplastics in the open ocean are referred to by cleanup experts as the world's largest continuous oil spill only in solid droplet form. Due to the petroleum-based origin and impact on the wildlife and environment and level of difficulty for cleaning up. GIS plays an important role in providing mappable survey information with locations and statistics for citizen science cleanup events that are occurring globally. Organizations such as the Wilson Center are working to harmonize global cleanup efforts and collect and inventory cleanups on our coastlines. While this only addresses a fraction of the ocean plastic problem, these data provide insight for estimating the amount and severity of plastic in our natural environment globally. In this map, we can see cleanup locations over time where individuals or groups participated in visual, participated and visualized the collected debris and plastic information. It's clear that individuals play a key role in combating the ocean plastic crisis, whether it's reducing our pollution footprint, buying more sustainable packaging, or participating in cleanup events, there's room for all of us to make a difference. Knowing all of this, an important way that individuals can actively participate is by working with local, state, and national government representatives to help enact better legislation and policy to appropriately value recycled plastics. Until recycled plastics are valued appropriately, causing virgin plastic production to slow or cease, detrimental damages to our environment will outpace our ability to act sustainably. By engaging with your government officials, voicing these, the importance of this critical issue, and by practicing your right to vote, you can help make a difference in the global ocean plastic crisis. I encourage you to check out the story map to discover more about the ocean plastics problem, take a deeper dive into the available maps, statistics, and other resources, and learn how we can do better. Let's not let this problem continue and pass it along to future generations. The time to act is now. Thank you. Thank you so much, Keith. It's so incredible to see all of the work that's gone into this product. And I hope that everyone will take the time to check it out at the Live Demo Expo and learn more. Next, I'll turn it over to Kunal from IBM to talk about how they have approached this challenge. Kunal, over to you. Uh, thank you. 
Uh, I'm Kunal Sawakar. I'm from IBM's data science elite team. And today we'll be walking you through how AI can help in the challenge for global marine litter. Uh, one of the key objective of UN Sustainable Development Goal, as we understood from our stakeholders, was to uh, reduce the amount of plastic pollution uh, throughout the planet. However, doing so is not possible for the simple reason that we don't know how much global marine litter exists. So creating a baseline and a uniform lack of uniform data collection mechanism makes it a harder problem to solve. And the reason behind that is because we don't really have our scientific surveys conducted all over the world using the same methodology. And so, and some places are frequented too uh, often while others are not. So given amount of litter that we observe, we need to come up with an estimate of how much global litter exists all over the place, all over the countries, as well as throughout the world. Now doing so required us to handle some of the key biases in the data, like temporal biases, which is about uh, like the data collected today is dependent on what happened yesterday, as well as the spatial biases that some places which are sampled too frequently, as well as the blind spot bias, which is about uh, some data and the litter that we will never be able to uh, capture because it can get washed away to the sea. To handle these challenges, we make use of uh, Wilson Center's combined data set and catalog that into Watson Knowledge Catalog to get a clean, confirmed, and searchable view of a data set that researcher can trace back to. Then we have used machine learning to build a baseline model for marine litter density with the help of Bayesian inference technique to account for uncertainties in the data set. Doing so allowed us to use uh, this information for predicting how much effort is required at a given place so that a volunteer uh, can optimize their resources accordingly, as well as which policies are more effective in order to go towards a zero discharge and as well as track the progress uh, of the marine litter density over year and year over different places. So we uh, use a dashboard in order to uh, see this progress, this particular dashboard allows the user to see the marine litter density for plastic and non-plastic debris at every given location. They can also see when the beach was last cleaned, uh, what was the top organization that cleaned it, and which was the collection mechanism that was used for that particular location uh, by the different uh, methodologies, as well as they can get an estimation of plastic litter density and how is it improving year on year for the different uh, kind of the beaches that are uh, available in the particular uh, real. Uh, doing so allows us to create a more aggregated view of marine litter density at the country level, which we can include to come up with an estimate of how different countries compare to each other in terms of marine litter density. We can also uh, see the de uh, development of uh, marine litter debris over a period of time and uh, split between uh, percentage of plastic being found on the beaches versus the non-plastic items that are being found and uh, how different places are doing again, uh, or different countries are improving in terms of their uh, plastic pollution challenge. Uh, for some of the uh, more uh, cases, like uh, more uh, larger countries, we can also do a drill down. For going through the cleanup effort, the dashboard allows user to see how different countries stack up with each other in terms of cleanup events and what are the key uh, debris that are being found. So for example, Ghana takes a cake in terms of the maximum number of litter found, as well as uh, uh, we can see that United States leads the number of cleanup event. While uh, uh, Malaysia has a lot of volunteer activity in terms of uh, engaging the civic society for the marine litter density engagement. 
So this allows a view to the end user to uh, engage as well as have different stakeholders come to the same platform and being part of the ecosystem to join the global uh, marine litter cleanup effort. Thank you. Thank you so much, Kunal. It's great to hear how IBM has addressed this challenge and we look forward to seeing what's next.